so actually we will go ahead with the class network now further and we will now formally prove uh, that in what cases it will be rearrangement non blocking and how you will actually do the rearrangement that also the answer will come we will also prove now formally when a switch will be strictly non blocking in a three stage class network intuitively we do have an idea that number of middle stage switches has to be equal to twice the number of inputs per switch minus 1 ok if it is equal to that or greater than then it will be strictly non blocking. But before doing that we have to understand the formalism of pulse matrix that is where I think I left in the previous class ok. So, the pulse matrix is Uh, nothing but it is a matrix it is going to have rows and columns obviously and the number of rows is equal to number of input states switches not the ports remember it is equal to number of switches in the first stage ok. So, if I am going to have say for example, a switch like this which has four things there might be many number of incoming ports per switch. So, I will only write A, B, C, D and there will be only 4 rows in this case. So, I will have only row A, row B, row C and row D. Similarly, on the output side on the third stage basically, I will have number of switches and they need not be same. I am not uh, the whatever I am now going to do the formulae is for any kind of class configuration this need not be symmetric. Number of input ports need not be equal to outgoing ports ok. It has it can be anything arbitrary. So, I may even end up in having 5 switches nobody stops me. I may end up in having 5 switches. The number of ports here can be different than number of ports per switch there that is also permitted. So, far it is a class network I will be able to deal with it ok. Earlier case was I took everything symmetric and then through some uh, rationale or logic I was able to derive when the switch will be strictly non blocking. So, it is a general case now. So, if you have for example, now A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime and E prime. So, in this case correspondingly I will have 5 columns and I call it A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime and E prime. In the middle stage again there will be many switches So, fundamental rule is if the outgoing ports one thing which is very obvious is these outgoing ports in the first stage has to be more than the incoming ports. So, that the switch itself will not create any blocking is very important switch should not create any blocking. So, because if somebody is trying to come in output port is free, but these ports are less you cannot do it. So, blocking happens because of the this n n 1 is a smaller than m 1. So, that condition should not happen. So, n 1 should always be greater than m 1 if that is there n m 2 m 3 is again greater than n 3. Then also the blocking will not happen because of the switch it will only happen because of interconnection ok. Now, what I can do is only thing which I need to manipulate now here is number of switches in the middle stage. If I only keep it one unfortunately there will be only one line coming from that it will be a blocking switch because these ports are less than the input. So, one thing which is sure is if I have this as an input and this as an output and for example, if this number of outputs n 3 I am just going from certain fundamentals now. So, m 1 and m 3 if they are equal it is ok. Then we know that if the number of outgoing ports is less than m 1 number of incoming ports is less than n 3 it is blocking which actually means when r 2 is going to be less than m 1 or n 3 whichever is the minimum of the two it is going to be blocking 
in fact that is what the result which you will get. <coughs> now, if I want to set up a connection from here, I want to set up a connection from here. Okay. So, one thing which is sure that R 2 should be greater than or equal to maximum of m 1 sorry not minimum, but maximum. This is this has to be ensured so that the blocking does not happen because of the switches. It happens because of the interconnection. So, that is the first condition. So, if you are below this your switch is a blocking switch. Okay. It cannot be reasonably block non blocking it also cannot be in fact, it has to be yeah. If R 2 is less than maximum of m 1 and m 3 then switch is blocking 100 percent blocking. Okay. Uh, so, for certain combinations you will find switch cannot get through and blocking is not because of interconnection, but because of switches itself. Okay. Because the number of ports will become is smaller than the outgoing ports on this side or the incoming ports on this side. So, first condition. Now, next is uh, once this thing is clear it means now when I am making interconnection going to be in this way there is R 2. So, when you make R 2 is going to be greater than or equal to this condition in the beginning R 2 will satisfy something as I keep on increasing R 2 there must be an R 2 after which I should be able to set up all connections all possible connections because R 2 is infinity switch has to be strictly non blocking number of I O ports are limited. Okay. Number of I O ports are limited. So, at certain value of R 2 it will become strictly non blocking at certain value of R 2 it should be rearrangeably non blocking and below this it should be blocking, but still I am not sure whether it is going to be rearrangeably non blocking if this condition is satisfied this I am not sure as of now. So, this I do not know about that thing, but at certain value of R 2 it will become rearrangeably non blocking and after certain threshold it has to be strictly non blocking. Strictly non blocking you are not rearranging any connections you should be able to in every state should be able to set up the connection. In rearrangeably non blocking you have to make the rearrangement of existing connections I O map or I O pairs still are maintained as same and then you can set up the connection. Intuitively we actually can deduce that rearrangeably non blocking switches will require lesser amount of resources compared to strictly non blocking which is going to be true actually. Okay. So, that is the case now let us look at how the pulse matrix actually helps us. So, we will now put uh, some number or whatever it is on some symbols actually on this middle stage switches and when a connection is set up. So, when I take for example, this particular port I set up a connection I set up to this particular port. Okay. Between these two ports A prime and D prime I use a switch 9. So, I am going to route the call through 9. I can now put in the cell that I am now set up a call. I am not worried about which particular port here okay. because there can be exactly one call which can be set up from there can be multiple, but through 9 only one can be set up. So, if there is another port which is free which also wants to go to D prime I will have to use some other switch it cannot be through 9 because there is only one line here there is only one line here. Hmm? No it is not one by one there are other switches also. Na? So, everybody is connecting. So, the number of switches here is R 1 R 3. So, this is R 1 by R 3 switches all middle state switches are R 1 by R 3 they have to be because you cannot leave any port open here every port is connected in the middle stage. All inputs are coming at this port all outgoing ports are on this stage. All middle stages have to be connected to somewhere that is as per the clause interconnection thing. So, the next one for example, 
this same guy wants to set up a call from here through 5, that is the next one. This guy A wants to set up a call to say B, it can use something like 3, so I will can put 3 here. Some other switch wants to set up a call to D prime, but this can be through this, cannot be through this route because this is occupied. So, D can be connected to D prime through 8. That is what the pulse matrix is. Now, what are the validity conditions? Now, one of the very simple thing, if I would have, have liked to set up a, this particular connection, this line was free, but could have used this. I could not have used this line because this link is already occupied, because the connection from A to D prime has been set up. So, which actually means 9 cannot come in the column corresponding to D prime because it has already been occupied. Because if D to D prime I would have connected through 9, I would have put a 9 here. But 9 cannot repeat in the same column. Okay. But if I am in a multicast configuration, multicasting is a one input is being connected to multiple outputs. I am trying to make copies of the signal to multiple outputs. I am not estimating any probability. You just find out whichever is free and make the connection. Sir, suppose I want to make a connection from D to D prime. D to? D prime. Exactly right. Then why cannot I use that input with 9 and from there to? Uh, from here to 9 and from here to D. You can certainly use who stops. No, there is no multicasting because this he is setting up one connection this way and one connection this way. This is permitted by this crossbar. This permitted. So, I can actually put uh, D to B if I want to put it, I can put 9 here. So, conditions actually are coming on columns and rows, what elements can come, whether elements can be duplicated in a row or whether they can be duplicated in column or not. So, those are the validity conditions. Okay. So, I am now coming to a case where this port, whatever M was giving to D also wants to send it to somebody else, for example, B. You forget this particular connection. Okay. So, same input is coming here, there is a crossbar I am able to put a copy on this side also. That is a multicast case. In that case, uh, A to D prime has 9. A to B prime also can have a 9, which actually means I can have duplication of elements in the rows, that is possible because it is the multicasting. But duplication within column was not permitted. I cannot combine this and this signal and send it over single link to D prime, that is not possible. It will create interference. So, I am trying to emphasize that whether elements can be repeated again in rows or columns or not. They can be repeated in rows, within rows they can be, but within columns they cannot be. And this repetition will only happen if it is a multicast scenario, not in unicast case. Unicast it will be only coming exactly once. Why it is going to come exactly once? If you look at A, 9, 5 has already come, there is no multicasting. If 9 has already come, I cannot use this link to set up any other connection. So, this 9 cannot repeat anywhere in the column, in the row. Similarly, in the column, I cannot repeat 9 if this link is already being used to set up some path from D prime to some input port. If this 9 is already used, I cannot also repeat if it is a unicast case. Okay. So, now let us write down what will be the legitimate pulse matrix conditions. I am formally writing them now. I have explained it by example. Each row will have how many elements? Tell me that at most. Number of elements are R2. R2 can be larger than, is usually going to be larger or equal to, large, uh, greater or equal to the number of incoming ports M1, 
but how many entries you can make here? Can you put R2 entries? You cannot set up R2 connections. Only M1 connections at most you can set up. So M1 entries from those R2 possible symbols, any R M1 you can use and they can be put in the row. So that gives the maximum size of elements in the row, except if it is a multicast, then it will be duplicated. Okay. But that actually means there can be exactly only M1 symbols which will be there, the symbols can be repeated in a row if it is a multicast. Out of R2 only M1 symbols will be used and they can be any, any combination. There is no restriction on that. It all depends how you are setting up the connection. Okay, so first case is each row can have at most M1 symbols. This actually means number of max, uh, the paths, number of paths which can be set up from a switch, from an input stage switch can at most be M1. That is what it means. Okay? So, I can write that number of paths can be equal to inputs to this the switch, input to stage switch actually. And which is the stage one? Okay, I write it simply this way. Input to stage switch actually means only this switch, not the whole switch, only this switch, which is M1. Okay. So, that is the first condition. Next. I have already told you. What about column? Give me the equivalent statement for a column. N3, right, exactly. It has to be only N3. So, what I will do is the whole statement is going to be same. So, wherever there is going to be a, okay, let me write it down because each column. can have at most N3 symbols. And this actually implies that number of paths at the most equal to number of outputs in output stage switch. So, you agree with these two conditions. Now, third condition is The symbols in each row so I am not worried about which symbols there will be only m3 symbol m1 symbols or n3 symbol okay but they all symbols have to be distinct if it is a unicast case So, this actually means one edge from each first stage switch to each middle stage switch.
and no multicasting is allowed in this case. So this actually means at the most R2 symbols can be there. So whatever is the minimum of M1 and R2 that has to be here. Okay. So if you do not bother about that condition at most R2 can be there because only R2 symbols are there and you are not having distinct thing because there is no multicasting. So but usually it will be because I have already told you that M1 is going to be smaller than R2. So usually M1 symbols will be there, M1 distinct symbols will be there and they will be chosen from R2 possible symbols and they will all be distinct, they will not be repeated actually that what it means because there is no multicasting. Hmm? There is no relation, they can be independent they can be independent and you can generally you can make a general proof on that. Usually in most of the actual implementations they will all be equal. M1 and N3 will always be equal, R1 will always be equal to R3. Usually symmetricity will be always maintained in actual implementation. Okay, because this is, but there may be cases where you do not want a symmetry asymmetric cases are possible. So now let us come to the fourth condition. Symbols in each column should be distinct. only one edge from each second stage switch to each third stage switch. Okay, and an edge cannot carry signals from two sources. Okay. And that also implies that at most R2 symbols, if you do not bother about the other statement, when you combine you get min max all kind of combination, okay. independently at most R2 symbols can be there, distinctness. Only if the multicast is there, condition number 1 and 3 will not be valid, but 2 and 4 will be strictly valid, that is a final thing. For multicasting, one and three not valid, but two and four are valid. That is only change. You can have more than M1 symbols in the row once it is multicasting and they may not be distinct. You can repeat them. Okay. So they will not, they will be more than R2 that actually what it means. Uh, they, they can become more than R2, yeah, right. So as a consequence, if I put everything in a figure, I can simply write this thing as so in a row, you will have m1 
minimum of m1 r2 symbols at most minimum of m3 and r2 symbols that is what it means actually. Now, formally writing down the definition for a strictly non blocking switch and rearrangeably non blocking switch, I have to define the sets of the ports. So, let me give the definition and then state the statement. So, let T prime be subset of T, where T is nothing but set of all transmitting terminals or input ports. And there will be R prime, this can be any subset, there are many possible values of T prime and R prime. Okay. So, R prime be subset of R, where R is set of all receiving terminals. And there is a state of the switch. Now, state of the switch is nothing but this that each element of T prime, this basically T prime is all ports which are busy, R prime set of all ports which are also busy. So, what we will do is each element of T prime is connected to. So, connection how we write? We write a legitimate multicast tree is there from each element of T prime to elements in R prime that is the way it is being written actually. So, that is only a formal language but whatever I am saying otherwise is actually means the same thing. R prime by A now this is <laughs> legitimate all pulse meter conditions are satisfied. So, if it is multicast even those conditions are satisfied. So, multicast unicast everything is taken care of by this and usually number of members in R prime most of the people will think the cardinality of R prime and T prime is going to be same the number of members in that set because one port is connected to one outgoing port, but in multicast this may not be true. So, cardinality may not be equal actually. So, that is why it is a multicast tree actually which has been mentioned. Okay. That is one important three that each element in T prime is connected to R prime through a legitimate multicast tree. So, but R prime can be more. So, there should not be any element in R prime which should be left out. So, for that there is another thing that each element in R prime connected to n element in T prime. So, an element in T prime can be connected to multiple elements in R prime, but an element in R prime is always going to be connected to only one element in T prime. Okay. So, you can only split in the forward direction while doing the you cannot combine actually combination is not permitted, but splitting of signal is permitted that is what it means. Okay. And that is what the multicasting essentially actually also implies. Now, with this set definitions, now let us define what is the strict sense non blocking network. Okay, then we will go to the proof of that. So, a strict sense non blocking an element T which belongs to T minus T prime a free incoming port that is what it means. Okay. 
so symbols and everything looks very dangerous but it's not this only means a free incoming ports any free incoming port is what it is implied by this t t prime is what set of all busy ports t is set of all ports you remove these all busy ports this set of all free ports t is a member of that okay t can establish now that's very important it can not not only establish one to one connection the way i defined is earlier i have told you there was one input port there is one outgoing port both are free i should be able to set up the connection no that's not the only condition if this is a free input port there are many outgoing free ports for in this free ports for any set any subset of the free ports i should be able to set up a multicast tree okay that's the condition for strictly non blocking not point to point connection okay so i am now deviating from whatever i have said earlier so this more uh, uh, this will be a much more proper definition of strictly non blocking network okay so i should be able to set establish a legitimate multicast tree to any subset of r minus r prime okay that's more appropriate definition but this is still still not defined what is strict sense strict sense now i am defining without changing previously established paths for and this should be true for all possible t prime because t prime also can be all various different possibilities which exist okay for all so i have to now qualify it t prime r prime and all connection patterns between t prime and r prime this is the i think a complete definition this is a very much complete definition and instead of without changing if you say by rearranging all the existing connections from t prime to r prime so that all legitimate existing multicast trees are still maintained okay but the connection patterns may be rearranged or maybe redone again and then if you are able to do this establish a new legitimate multicast tree all the time then that's a rearrangeable non blocking switch and there is something called white sense non blocking uh, i don't have a formal definition but you can try writing it out uh, i will give an example of white sense non blocking switch uh, i think later sometime i think that's the only example which i am aware of as of now okay so the clause theorem i can now state the clause theorem once i have given this definition okay so the clause theorem a clause network is strict sense non blocking if and only if necessary and sufficient 
okay only if means it is sufficient if means it is necessary condition ok. So, both we have to prove necessity as well as sufficiency both this I have not stated earlier I only told this happens this will be there, but is it sufficient condition I have not mentioned that ok. If number of second stage switches R 2 is greater than or equal to I think you will should be able to appreciate this new expression it is for asymmetric switch remember it is asymmetric it is a generalized formulation. And I can write in particular that is what I have told you earlier. for symmetric network m 1 is equal to n 3 is equal to n if and only if R 2 is greater than or equal to 2 n minus 1. Okay. So, that is the definition now formally I can just prove it because I have now pulse matrix I have pulse validity conditions everything there with me. So, let us use that and quickly prove it. Okay. So, at least we should be able to close with the clause theorem today. So, proof I am going to write it down I could have only spoken it out, but that is fine. So, let there be an input from switch A who wants to get connected to an output of switch B. Okay. So, input from So, how you will set up the connection? You take the pulse matrix, uh, I think I can remove this particular stuff and draw the figure that will be required. So, there is something which is common here where I have to put the entry. write B does not matter or you can put B dash also it is ok. I am just putting A B. So, how you will set up the connection is by you take any middle stage switch and that entry has to be put here ok. Any middle stage switch I have to put an entry without violating the pulse matrix conditions ok. So, if I am able to find out an element a free element of every symbol from the middle stage switch which can be put without violating the thing I can always set up the connection. Okay, now, you have to only figure out that in all possible scenarios you should be able to build up this <coughs> and you will actually figure out that what I am doing. So, okay, let me just uh, you can actually note it down. Okay, I think it is better to write because this text is not there anywhere else. So, for the people who are will be looking at the video recording this will be important you have the text other people do not have. So, the connection is made by putting a middle stage
switch entry in a b cell of false matrix. that is what has to be done. I am not worried about now duplicated entries because if there is a multicasting entries will be repeated in a row. So, now when I am going to write the statement I will use a word distinct before the entries. So, if they are duplication one is being repeated three times I will still call only one distinct entry. So, that becomes very important ok. So, the previous statements when I have written the distinct word you have to always figure out whenever I write distinct what it means because you are going to even handle for the multicast ok. So, precision is very important here. There can be at most because there is one input in switch A which is free which you are trying to connect. So, worst case scenario m 1 input ports must be busy, m 1 minus 1 input ports must be busy ok. So, that actually means there can be at most m 1 minus 1, I am going to now put a word distinct to take care of multicast scenario now. Earlier I would have said m 1 minus 1 symbols would have been there at most, m minus 1 distinct symbols can be there at most because in multicasting the symbols will repeat. So, number of symbols is not important, number of distinct symbols is what is important ok. So, I am going to put a word distinct entries already in row A. So, this is equal to number m 1 inputs minus 1 input which wants to get connected m 1 inputs minus 1 input which wants to get connected. Using the same logic I can say that column B can have at most m 3 minus 1 symbols. And worst to worst case, what can happen is this m minus m 1 minus 1 and this m 3 minus 1 distinct symbols, they will always be distinct actually, does not matter because there will not be any repetition in the column. 2 and 4 conditions for the pulse matrix are always valid, irrespective of whether it is unicast or multicast, ok. So, total number of symbols in worst case scenario no symbol in m 1 minus 1 in this set and in this set there is no symbol which is common. So, there is a distinctness they are all distinct. So, total number of symbols which are occupied are m 1 minus 1 plus m 3 minus 1 I think you can understand what I am doing, but I am just writing whatever I have said earlier in the previous earlier lectures ok. So, these many total symbols are already occupied or busy if number of available symbols is going to be more than this, you will be able to find one sim one those the symbols which are not consumed here. Because if the number of sim available symbols are more than this, there is has to be some symbol which is available now. And that symbol can be put in this cell and I can set up the connection. And this can always be done, this can always be done. Now, as far as the multicast tree is concerned, uh, what actually probably uh, instead of this I can further say let A is has to connect it to B and D somewhere. So, I have to put entries here, same entry also should repeat here ok, same entry should also repeat here that is most important. And then I can create a multicast tree. Is, is for to catering for the multicast. Hmm? Hmm? 
entries and symbols are same. Any symbol which is entered there, that's what I'm talking about. Otherwise, it's a distinct entered symbol. Or distinct symbols is also fine, not an issue. This is true even for multicasting. Clause theorem is true even for multicasting. So, this actually means R2 has to be greater than M1 plus N3 minus 2 for switch to be strictly non blocking, which actually implies that R2 has to be greater than or equal to M1 plus N3 minus 1. I have put the equal to condition, that is why I added 1 there. And if it is symmetric case, it becomes 2 m minus 1, okay. Because I am using m not n, so it is 2 m minus 1. So, this is the same condition which I had told you earlier. So, you find out the worst case offset and then maximum overlap and based on that you find out. Okay. And since this entry, this new entry has not been used by neither in this column or in this column. Okay. Uh, if you look at for D, similarly you will be able to find out because D is also free in worst case offset, you can find out always some entry which also can be put here. I need not put the same entry here and here, remember. If I am trying to set up a connection with D, so whatever number of symbols which are used here and number of symbols which are used here, worst case scenario will be M1 minus 1 and N3 minus 1 and whatever is missing that actually can be used here. I can even repeat the same symbol if it is available, otherwise I will use some other symbol. Uh, multicasting is enabled, repetition is permit, repetition, repetition actually means that. So, now let us, uh, uh, that finishes with the clause theorem, only thing the multicasting, I will try to elaborate on that in the next lecture slightly more. I have only told about this as for unicast connection. So, let me also uh, look into more into the multicast scenario specifically, because that sufficiency and condition has not been still proven for multicast. And then we will go for slip and deviate theorem, rearrangement with non-blocking switch condition. condition yeah, this condition currently is for unicast, I have not told about anything about multicast, but this will be true even for multicast, but I have to formally prove it. So, I have to at least give an argument how it will be, because you should actually ask a question. Uh, m1 minus 1 are occupied here, there is exactly one extra entry which is free which you have used here already. These entries are there, okay. Now question is, it is possible that this particular entry which have been put here have already been used somewhere here, but then in that case, uh, the condition of distinctness between this and this will not be maintained, there is something which is already common. Okay. So, that entry cannot be, well, I have to just actually articulate that. That articulation so far has not been done for multicast scenario. So, so far proof, this is trends only for unicast. So, we have to figure out whether this condition is going to be true for multicast or not. So, I also leave it to you, because this is, as of now, till now whatever we have discussed, it is only showing it for unicast. Multicast, I have to give the case that it is always going to be possible. Okay. So, we will uh, go further in the next class from here onward.